Its full impact may have been intended for a domestic audience, but there was more than a hint of menace in Putin's warning that any outside threat would be met with annihilation. In an address to the Russian people today, Vladimir Putin claimed he's developed a new arsenal of weapons that the U.S. cannot counter. These include a nuclear-powered cruise missile, a hypersonic missile that can strike anywhere, and a nuclear-powered underwater drone. The speech that had seemed relentlessly domestic suddenly took an explosive turn. No one expected Vladimir Putin's annual address to Parliament to involve advanced missile systems and strategic weapons amid talk of job creation and better roads in the years ahead. It was a response, he said, to years of unchecked advances by the United States in missile defense. There should be no doubt in anyone's mind that after the invasion of Georgia, the invasion of Ukraine, the intervention in Syria, um, the meddling in our election, the attack last week by Russian mercenaries on U.S. forces in Syria, that we are again in a Cold War. We are in conflict with Russia. Russia has always been a big nuclear state. No one wanted to speak constructively with us in the past. No one wanted to listen. Well, listen to us now. One missile in development, Putin explained, could travel the globe with unlimited range and entirely undetected by radar defense systems. Less than three weeks before the presidential election, it was all greeted with ecstatic applause by Russia's political elite. Putin's new weapons may, in fact, really be able to evade Western missile defense systems. Putin also said, Sandra, that these weapons that he has just obtained do not exist anywhere else in the world. That has yet to be confirmed. But one highly respected Russian military analyst I spoke to earlier said that these weapons are for real and that the nuclear arms race is back on full scale. Now, Putin rolled out several videos this morning uh, with computer animation to show these missiles, which he said were as fast as, quote, meteorites making their way to the Americas and around the world. Among the items he described, a nuclear-powered cruise missile and a nuclear-powered underwater drone. The weapons haven't all been named yet. He even suggested the Russian public write in their suggestions to the Ministry of Defense. Putin said these weapons were developed after the U.S. withdrew from the anti-ballistic missile treaty when Russia was on its knees. So it had to figure out a way to defend itself that Moscow's pro protestations about ditching the treaty were ignored by the U.S. The quote of the day probably from Putin was perhaps, quote, nobody listened to us, so listen to us now. He also said after all the applause from the audience died down, I hope this will, quote, sober up any potential aggressor. After 18 years in power, this was Vladimir Putin reminding Russians that their country is a world power once again. The strength of its conventional military on full display in Syria, he said, its nuclear capabilities now soon to be more than a match for U.S. might. Recent reports suggest a U.S. airstrike against a Syrian pro-government forces killed several hundred Russian mercenaries. One America's Christian Rose has more. The doomsday clock moves even closer to midnight as a U.S. airstrike reportedly kills at least 200 Russian private military personnel in eastern Syria. Just weeks before his all but guaranteed re-election, Russia's President Vladimir Putin gave his own version of a State of the Union address today. As Nick Schifrin reports, Putin used the occasion to show off new weapons that he says can defeat U.S. missile defenses and maintain a deadly balance with the United States. President Vladimir Putin today unveiled a grand vision for his country's future and what he called the means to achieve it, new nuclear weapons. No one wanted to speak with us constructively. No one has listened to us. You listen to us now. He showed off animations of weapons he called invincible, a hypersonic missile apparently capable of crossing continents in seconds, and a never-before-acknowledged nuclear-powered cruise missile, apparently that can slalom between missile defense systems that Putin considers a long-term threat. Any use of nuclear weapons against Russia and its allies will be perceived as a nuclear attack on our country. The response will be immediate. Our nuclear triad. Putin's return to Cold War rhetoric comes one month after the U.S. announced its own plans to deploy new nuclear weapons and greater willingness to use nuclear weapons. Putin said he was responding to American threats. The growing military strength of Russia is a secure guarantee of peace because this strength preserves and will always preserve a balance of power in the world. 
To no surprise, Russian lawmakers responded with praise. They said Putin once again made Russia a global superpower. The theory about Russia as a regional superpower with a weak economy disappears from the American political thinking. The speech took place just over two weeks before the Russian elections. Putin framed the U.S. as an adversary and himself the only leader strong enough to meet the challenge. We turn now to Richard Burt. He was the chief U.S. arms control negotiator during the strategic arms reduction talks with the Soviet Union during the Reagan administration. He also served as assistant secretary of state for European affairs. He's now at McClarty Associates, an international business consulting firm. Richard Burt, thank you very much. Good evening. Being here. Um, is this all about politics, domestic politics? Uh, President Putin not worried about threats to Russia, but in fact, threats to his own power? Well, part of it is certainly about politics. I mean, there's an election in March. Nobody's going to beat Vladimir Putin, but uh, Putin wants to get a good chunk, 70 percent or more of the vote. And uh, he can't talk about an economy that's rapidly growing. He, isn't, he doesn't have the kind of consumer uh, uh, economy that dominated the early part of this century. Uh, people's living standards are actually falling. So he's playing the great power card. He's saying, I brought Rus Russia back. We're a global superpower, and our technology is, is first class. It, it can compete uh, effectively with the United States, and so you can rest easy. That I am the only one who, who can take on the United States. And let's, let's look at it from his perspective for a second. Uh, he says, look, you withdrew from the ABM treaty, the anti-ballistic missile treaty. You're creating missile defenses that can counter our nuclear weapons. And so we have to counter back. What's wrong with that? Well, you know, Putin is not entirely wrong. Uh, we did withdraw from the ABM treaty in 2002. I personally think that was a mistake because the Russians tend on these kinds of issues to be paranoid. And the one thing the Russians liked about the ABM treaty is that it did give them this sense that both sides were vulnerable to annihilation. There was a kind of, uh, we called it mutual assured destruction at the time. And, and that so it made the Soviets feel that, that uh, and the Russians later, that they were co-equal nuclear powers. They were afraid when the ABM treaty was, was abandoned that the United States would use its superior technology to be able to engage in a potential nuclear first strike and that we could then politically dominate them. And so they've been concerned about that, and that paranoia, coupled with, I think, Putin's desire to look strong, has led to a fairly significant nuclear buildup. So there is that buildup happening in Russia. I should say uh, that the United States has also talked uh, about a buildup or modernization of its nuclear weapons. So do you fear an arms race right now? Do you fear the erosion of arms control? Well, I fear both of those. We are entering a new arms race for sure. It reminds me of the 1970s, 1980s. What's interesting is I don't think Americans are that focused on this at this point, but it's not only the Russians that are modernizing their forces with some very capable weapons they know how to build and maybe some fictional weapons. We don't know whether they will build or not, but the Russians are clearly deciding that they want to see nuclear weapons as an important element in their policy. The Trump administration is doing the same. In fact, even under Barack Obama, uh, the United States decided to engage in a 100 billion, uh, 100, sorry, one trillion dollar plus nuclear buildup with new missile submarines, new intercontinental range ballistic missiles, new strategic bombers. So we're kind of sleepwalking into this new uh, this new arms race. I don't think that either side in the near term is going to gain some important advantage. But under these conditions, we could lead to a situation where one or the other side felt that in a crisis, a serious disagreement, that uh, the other was going to strike and that that's when, you know, people begin to make mistakes. They make miscalculations. And the problem, secondly, is we don't have any arms control negotiations underway. The, 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 and we have an important treaty, the INF Treaty, signed in 1987, which could collapse in the, in, over the next year because we believe the Russians are cheating and they claim we are not following the treaty. Quickly, should the U.S. be concerned about this? Should Americans be concerned about these new weapons? Or should Americans also be concerned about what you call this sleepwalking into a conflict? I think it's more of the sleepwalking problem. I think what we need to do is find a way to get back into a serious conversation with the Russians 
discussions on controlling nuclear weapons. The longer we wait, the more difficult it will be, not only because both sides will have better weapons, but th with these new technologies of the sort that uh, Putin talked about today, we're gonna, we're gonna, it's going to be a lot harder to design effective agreements to control this new arms race.